Okay, this is a little bit of an embarrassing one, but this is an apology to Heatable and to Everything Electric, Fully Charged Show, all those people. And the apology is not so much because of the previous video I made, because I stand by those facts and I stand by that information, but maybe the torrent of comments that I allowed to happen and maybe that I kind of inspired those comments a little bit. And... Um, a lot of you were quite harsh about Heatable and about everything electric. And I don't think we needed to really go down that track. My video was just trying to be a little bit of a technical assessment and a little bit of a critique, but there's a few things that I've put together here. I just wanted to pick up, these are a few of the videos that I've watched that touch on various points here. And I don't necessarily blame companies like Heatable for reiterating claims made by manufacturers like Enphase or REA. Let's be honest, it doesn't really matter what size your company is. It's difficult for you to properly assess and test the claims that manufacturers have made. And in particular, I commend heatable for having a good go at it when they tried this five normal panels versus their bifacials and everything else and they they tried to do a little bit of real world test and i commend them for that and i thought that was great that they published all the information even though the test didn't go smoothly um also i guess another note is that i uh recorded that previous video the week or two before i went to everything electric show at the Everything Electric show, I met Imogen briefly and I met Ben and I met, um, oh dear, I'm going to be in trouble now. I think she watches some of the videos. Is it Liv? I think it's Liv and Ben from Heatable. All three of them are really, really lovely people. And I think they're doing good work and I think Heatable are kind of... Um, uh, working to pay off their sins of all the gas boilers that they're installing. <laughs> I hope that's fair to say. Um, but um, I like what they're doing in the solar industry. And like I said in that previous video, their website's brilliant. It's no nonsense. You can go and pick your roof. You can very quickly get a fixed price quote without any messing around, without any salespeople. And it's a good transparent model for the industry to try and replicate and try and imitate what Heatable are doing because there's that level of transparency that people want especially in an industry that is full of cowboys and then whatever Heatable do with vetting installers and all that other stuff you know that's that's their business I'm not going to go down that track but I think maybe people in the comments especially were quite unfair on Heatable their videos and I mean they're being brave to put all this stuff out there continuously shoot these videos they're not making money from the YouTube uh, fees. I could tell you that for sure. They're raising awareness and maybe they're getting some business from it, but they're getting a lot of stick from you guys. So anyway, um, I want to make a point that uh, this image, I love this image because it illustrates that all roads lead to Rome. Yeah, we know that saying, that idiom. But what does that really mean? What it really means is we need to stop pitting these things against each other and battle into the death and people are so stuck in their ways of every house has to have a hybrid inverter and every house has to have a micro inverter i think there's room for both and i don't think we should be you know battling directly for you know there is just one champion and there are no downsides we know there are downsides to microinverters that can't be denied. We know there are also downsides to most hybrid and string inverters that can't be denied. That means that there's different products for different use cases, which is great. I just want to share a message in my little uh, repentant speech here that all solar is good and anything is better than nothing. So we shouldn't be paralyzed by perfection. I think this is a real critical point to make in this green transition is that because this stuff might be new to us we don't want to make a mistake we don't want to fall in a trap and so we research things to death which is brilliant and I am so guilty of it I'm the complete control freak and I want to research every last little product and connector and rail and you name it I want to know all of the ins and outs and all of the little itty bitty details but 
if that paralyzes us and we end up doing nothing because it's so overwhelming and it's so confusing and because we've looked at a video and we look in the comments and everyone's arguing about micro inverters and hybrid inverters and it's all over the head of most average consumers are we doing more harm than good probably because getting solar on people's residential roofs should be an absolute top priority and we should all encourage that and we should all be behind that anyway um tribalism is bad very bad i've got a video coming up talking about the tribalism between air to water heat pumps and air to air heat pumps and why there's this like collision course between these two groups it's the same technology a slight difference in the implementation both are good both of them have their use case and we need both of them in this energy transition but you can see here that we do have some people who are like totally gung-ho for batteries home storage batteries they're the only way you've got other people like me who are like oh, i'm not so sure home storage batteries really make a lot of sense and yeah there are homes for them but it's not for me maybe and then there's people who are so like enthusiastic about microinverters there's one particular commenter in the last video and uh, uh, there's no point naming and shaming they went in and they replied to basically every comment defending microinverters and it was the lone voice in there trying to say that they way better in every way and you know we know that's just not true but uh, on top of that, there's so many people, they just swear by their hybrid inverters. And there are cases where microinverters make a lot of sense and will be better. In terms of performance, overall, what we're kind of arguing about here is 2%. You know, we're arguing about nothing. I, I come back to the point of bifacial panels and a few people picked up on that. I think I'm going to probably make a video about this. I think there's actually people online who are better placed to make a video about it. Um, like Martina does solar, for example. Um, no, that's <laughs> that was a complete collision there. Freudian slip. Gary does solar and Martina from Solar Time USA. Um, you know, people like those that really specialise in solar, I think they'd be better placed to make a video about bifacial panels. But if no one comes out with anything, then I'll put forward some of the things that I've read from studies. I've kind of uh, watched a, a few videos that I could summarise and then put some of the theory out there. But I think re in reality on UK roofs, you could expect 2%, maybe depending on what type of roof you've got, maybe up to a 5% advantage by having bifacial panels, but the gains are very marginal. It's marginal gains and in many cases may not be worth chasing whatsoever. Fit as many panels as you can get on your roof because solar area, surface area when it comes to solar is king. If you think about a um, if you think about a eight panel system and the difference between cheap panels and the most expensive bifacial panels is two to five percent in your generation but then if you quickly add just one panel you've added more than 10 percent onto your system so actually i think we should have more of a focus on surface area flood these roofs cover it with as much as you can and so maybe it's more of a cost issue there anyway um i've already said all this stuff i just want to wrap this up and say thank you for listening 99 percent of you won't like or comment on this video and i know that at the last count 96 percent of you aren't, aren't even subscribed to the channel so what are you waiting for go and do it and i'll see you on the next video goodbye